What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Brood War Ladder Cast. Today, we've put together a compilation of five very recent Shine replays from October 2024. We've got five replays with a variety of different level of players, different skill levels, different uh, races, most of them are ASL or ACS level players. And the first is probably going to be the strongest. Rain. Of course, one of the strongest Protoss players of all time. Should be putting up a good fight against Shine, who's spawning in the top left hand corner. We are here on Minstrel. So, you guys have heard me complain about this map with the ZVP before, but. I found that we've had quite a few strong games, quite a few fun games in pretty much every matchup so far. Minstrel's been, it's, it's been putting out. It's been showing us some great games. So hopefully we can get some more of the same with Shine. He knows that this is Rain Mini Maxi. That is a well-known ID at this point. Probably Rain streaming right now. Maybe Shine as uh, going to be streaming too. So these guys, they know who each other are. And we've got Rain blocking the hatchery after an overpool. A little bit annoying, but he does actually back away. A little bit surprised to see him not fight a little bit harder for that, but... He's going to let the hatchery go down at the natural. It's not that bad if you can put the hatchery at the third. Oftentimes, I'll just send a drone immediately to go and check that. But one thing of note is that Shine did not send a drone. So he saw the earliness of the probe and he thought, yeah, he probably went for a forge opener on a two player map. You can you can kind of tell what the Protoss player is doing based on when they're probe arrives because if you're on a four player map you don't know if they scouted you first if they scouted you second two player map you know that they scouted you immediately as soon as they send out that probe they're going to send it directly to your base and so if they're sending it this early uh, you know it's going to be a forge opener they're scouting you after pylon uh, if it was a gateway opener they'd be scouting you after the gateway just the way that the build works out a little bit so uh, that, that's that's kind of how we can tell as Zerg players what exactly is coming at us. So he's got the the Overlord over here uh, in not too uh, long of a time anyway. He's going to see the timing on the gateway. It's all working out as expected. Both players getting to do their builds without interruption. Thus far, we have the uh, third Overlord about to pop. Two lings on the field. He did go over here and check the hatchery. Just in case there happened to be a pile, another probe sent out and he could have been building cannons over here. So he goes ahead and checks that. Now going to come back into the main, try to remove this probe. He has the layer on the way. So no shenanigans for Shine. Just going to play a straight up game for now. And Rain, he knows. He sees everything. What's he going to throw down back at home? A Stargate on the way. Everything going to be spotted by this Overlord. He knows he needs to vacate. He sees the Zealot uh, popping out. Link Speed is on the way. Overlord going to be sent somewhere out on the map. You don't necessarily have to send this home. But you got to kind of try to hide it somewhere. Okay, the Zealot's going to go back home. He wanted to force a few extra pairs of links, and hey, look at that. He did indeed force those extra pairs, so going to be happy with that result. Uh, each one of these pairs of links is not a drone, and this many links this early on is not necessary unless you're going to be dealing with some pressure. So a bit of a win there for Rain. Nothing huge so far, but forcing a couple extra sets of links is good for him five drones on the way we're about to see a hatcheries five or four and five thrown down in a moment 
whether he'll go to six hatchery or not or if he's going to add on extra gases will give us a good idea of the plan the game plan for shine going forward citadel coming up pylon in the natural mineral line this is for cannons to be placed here or here uh, possibly a cannon could go down there as well I'm, actually i'm not sure if the gap is big enough i feel like that's big enough of a gap but i'm not 100 percent in order to defend this mineral line sometimes you need to throw down some cannons you may see a cannon shortly this is probably a good spot for it right there to protect that all-important stargate and the, the corsairs that are going to be popping out uh, six hatchery before second gas should be a hydralis build with only a few scourge popping out he does start plus one armor carapace for his air units Let's see what he ends up doing with that one kill on this corsair must have been an overlord the overlord that was probably in the main base other overlords have survived this Corsair attack. Cannon. Oh, it's going to be placed next to the uh, Nexus on the left-hand side. So, not able to snipe a Corsair as it pops out. He saves the Scourge, though. And he got a pretty good scout of the main base as well. So, everything is as it should be for now. Evolution Chamber will start. Feels a little bit late. But Mutas are going to pop out now. And he does have the third gas, so I may be a little bit off on this. We're going up to six hatcheries and then building Muta. Oh, a couple of Scourge are going to die over here. I wonder if this will go as planned. How many Mutas is he going to make? Five, just five. Okay, so it is indeed going to be Hydra play, but just five Mutas. To help out with any sort of zealot timing. Zealots are going to make their way over here. As the plus one and speed finishes. It's a good time to try and start this attack. One overlord goes down. We have a creep colony ready to be made into a sunken. Lings are on hold position. Scourge are going to come in from many different angles. Force these Corsairs back. Looks like they will all be uh, sent home. Trying to get the drill on these Zealots. A pretty decent drill overall, but the Sunken Colony will go down in a moment, and then more drones will begin to fall. Mutas are doing their best effort trying to pick off these Zealots as quickly as they can so the drones can get back to mining. And there it is. He does pick off the last few Zealots. Going to go for one last kill. Looks like he won't get anything for his effort. And the Corsair number is now back up to six. Pushing back the Scourge. A DT making its way over to the natural, but a sunken colony. Well, one sunken colony will not stop this, by the way, guys. All the all the Scourge go down. Uh-oh. This could get a little bit nasty. We just are going to go across the map, and the Overlords will both die. And now the DT can just come in and start to kill these drones. I don't think that Shine's paying attention to this. Yeah, he does see it now, but already a lot of damage has been done. Scourge going to pop. Overlord in the main as well, but oh, dude, all these Scourge and nothing to attack. Nothing to hit this Dark Templar. Seven kills on that now. Pretty good drone drilling on that, but it's a dangerous game. Ten kills on this DT before it falls. That's a significant hit to the economy. You know, he was around 45 before that went uh, before that DT got in, 43. And so, Shine is hurting pretty badly. Although he stopped that attack with the Zealots pretty well, not having the Sunken Colony finished was a big mistake. Corsair count is getting ridiculously high. With this many, you're not going to be able to connect hardly any Scourge at all. But with plus one... And a bit of splitting, adding some Mutalis in as well. You could get the hits necessary to lower this count. We'll just have to see how that engagement goes. The plus one makes a huge difference in these fights. 
Dragoons are starting to increment out now for rain. It's just about time to take a third base or go for a massive attack. Six more Dragoons are popping out in a moment. Groove Spines is finally going to finish that range has been delayed pretty significantly by Shine, but he finally has that uh, finishing up. He will not have Lurker for this next fight if Rain chooses to come across the map. He may just walk up and, and try to take his uh, third base, and with the probe coming out, looks like that's the plan. A lot of Scourge here, like two full control groups of Scourge, it looks like, with just a few Mutas mixed in. If he takes the, the right engagement with these Corsairs, he could end up wiping out most of them. But if this Templar lands a storm on a pack of Scourge, you could lose 12 Scourge in a matter of seconds. Dragoons. Mostly Dragoon army. Gonna be countered pretty heavily by what looks to be just pure Hydralis coming out for Shine. Instead of attacking those, Shine is just gonna sit, take his fourth base. 11 minutes is a little bit late, but there has been quite a bit of action. Ooh, Ventral Sacks. We've seen this quite a bit lately from Zerg players staying on lair for a really long time and just dropping everywhere, throwing in drops to the Protoss bases trying to get damage and fighting constantly without ever going to Hive. It's a kind of a risky play. And if the Protoss player uh, knocks it back uh, properly and keeps a high Templar count, it's very difficult to make any progress and eventually they will wear you down. Zealots with 1-1 one, one pushing up against Hydras with, w or sorry. <laughs> Pushing up against Hydras with 1-0. Trying to kill off some Lurker eggs. Open up the space so that units can flow through a bit better. As Rain double expands on the right-hand side. So not content with just a single expansion. Going to really up the ante by double expanding and t daring Sharp to attack into him. You can see a lot of Scourge. Still, the, the two two control groups of Scourge. Pretty hard to micro a ton of Hydras. And move a ton of Hydras around the map when three of your control groups are Scourge and Mutas. You can see here's one control group. There's another. And there's one more. So, a big load up of Hydras here on the left-hand side. Can't be running into these Corsairs, but that's what the Scourge are for, guys. Remember, his Scourge have not been wasted. They've not been thrown away, and now they're going to be valuable. There's the big engagement. He catches them with the Hydras, and now diving on top of this army, forcing the Corsairs northward. This is exactly what Shine wants. The Corsairs to fly in the other direction so that he can get in with this drop. It'll be up to... Shine, whether this can make it into the main base or not. Templar are coming down. We've got some Dragoons on the south side. Where are these Overlords? They're heading to the south. But they might end up getting caught. I think that Rain may be on to this. I think he might have figured out what's going on. He's brought his Corsairs down to the south once again. Dodging with these Overlords. You gotta wonder as Rain, when you see Overlords moving around like this, you've gotta be up to something. There's no reason to have a bunch of Overlords moving around as a pack like that. Zealots are making their way down into the bottom left, but it seems like this will get by. A drop, one group of Hydras going to kill that Dragoon. Corsairs will go down on this side of the map, but over here in the main base, okay, not gonna do that drop. I think that's the right choice. Valid decision there for Shine. Now, he's actually cleared out all the Corsairs, which is a pretty decent spot to be in. When you've got drop and you're going to be relying on drop to get damage, if you get rid of all the Corsairs, it feels pretty darn good. 
He's managed to keep hold of this base. He needs more hatcheries, though. 1,400 minerals is not acceptable. We need to be spending that money. Can't be leaving the drops down here as well, because if Rain brings an army to bear and starts killing those overlords, you're going to lose a lot of supply for free. Oh, he's flying northward. It might fly right into this army. Be careful with that. A lot of lurkers on this high ground. Rain may be goaded into an attack as this army makes its way over to one of these two bases. There's a lot of Templar, though, defending. I don't know if he can break this. I don't know if he can break either location. He's going to run right up. Start to kill a Templar. Can he get it? Does not get it in time. Hydras are going to run right through the storms and try to get the kill on this base. Looks like he just will barely be able to beat this. Yeah, for now, he can hit that. Lurkers on high ground are going to be difficult to penetrate, but Rain bringing the entire might of his army down on this base. Will he break it through? Great storm there, killing a lot of Hydras and damaging that Lurker. More Lurkers are going to be moved up to try and defend. The drops are going to be sent back home. He needs to defend this. Lurkers and Hydras coming from the north, sandwiching this army. Looks like he will be able to kill everything, dropping on top of the army. No, he's just going to drop over here and then send his army in. If only he had dropped on this low ground or down here. I guess over here he could have cut off the retreat, but maybe that would have forced the Dragoons up onto this high ground. Not sure. Meanwhile, this Nexus was killed. The Zealots managed to clear out most of the Hydras, but killing off that base is huge. Still 51 probes remain, so not many probes were killed over here. I might picture and picture that. Uh, so we don't miss anything, but not if there weren't any probes killed or nothing substantial happened. So where did we lie? Where, where, what's the verdict after that engagement, the trade of bases? I guess it wasn't really a trade, right? Shine killed a base and then um, Rain threw away an army. So it wasn't truly a trade. We've got 2-1 on these... Zealots that are running in towards the natural, but we've already got Hydras in position. Lurkers. Okay, there's one area that's not very well defended. Only two Lurkers down at this bottom left corner. Zealots are going to try to make their way in to the natural while this attack is taking place. Some Lings and Hydras are coming in to help out with this defense, but the Lurkers are e easily crushed. Oh my gosh, the storms on these drones. Massacring the drones there. Zealots are still doing a good job just fighting away at that natural. And Lurkers are going to come down. Try to save this base, but I'm not sure if he'll be able to. Maybe he can bring Lurkers down here and pin this in. At least kill the army. Going to come forward now with the Lurkers and Hydras. He really needs to save this. Keep this alive. It is absolutely critical. Lurker going to come from behind. Tries to get the sandwich, but not able to make it happen. One Lurker versus five Dragoons. He's going to be able to get that kill. But the real follow-up is the scary part. A lot of Dragoons. Zealots and Templar are making their way to the bottom left. What does Shine have? He threw away quite a few Lurkers trying to dive on those Dragoons. And now he's got hardly anything left. Two different locations. Two different choices of bases to attack right now. Rain can go in wherever he pleases. Great storm on a bunch of these lings as they run forward into the meat grinder. GG is called. A few final storms thrown down as Shine leaves the game. Brutal. Damn, it's... Yeah, this is, this is tough, guys. This map is tough. This matchup is tough. Shine played his heart out here, but... Rain, with the reinforcement wave, able to overcome. I think it was truly the storms on all of these units on the left-hand side. The fact that he just didn't quite have enough blocking at this base. The drop play also didn't work out well for him. I mean, he cleaned this whole army. This whole army was cleaned. He killed off a massive amount of Dragoons and Templar. Only a few stragglers managed to escape. We've got Rain on pretty much one base. I guess he's still got quite a few minerals in the main. I, I didn't really realize 
how many he had left. He did some a pretty good job mineral smoothing, I guess. How much was left here? I thought he was mining on one base. But he sucked up a lot more minerals from this than I expected. Setting a lot of probes up there, I guess. And yeah, just not enough defense down here. Shine having a hard time spending his money this game. I swear it's because of the lack of a seventh hatchery. Or eighth hatchery, excuse me. Usually when you take a fourth base, it's kind of automatic. You want to have another hatchery at that base. Otherwise, you just won't be able to spend your money. Uh, with four gases, you can build a lot. Oh, he was going hive. Okay, he did go hive in the end. Uh, I didn't catch that. A little bit too much craziness going on in this game. But right here, I think this is where things started to fall apart. The lurkers were not brought down quickly enough. You know, if he brings... If he... Uh, unburrows lurkers bring these lurkers to here and these lurkers down to here rotate this army a little bit quicker of course he's dealing with an attack into his natural at the same time but you can pull back your army a little bit and build a lurker wall lurker egg wall is pretty strong against zealots it's like these zealots really mincing the lings with only zero zero yeah, Lings do not do very well. Look at how much money is in the bank when this attack happens. This is something that happens to me a lot as well, so uh, I can't judge. Shine almost had this, guys. He almost beat Rain. If he holds off this attack, the game will continue. It's not like he was just about to win, but he had a he was standing a good chance. If this storm didn't happen, it just eviscerating all of his drones. I think he would have had a pretty reasonable shot getting into Hive pretty late on, but better late than never. Switching into Ling production. Yeah, it's hard. It is hard when your opponent already has 2-2 two, two and your Lings are 0-0. Zero, zero. Oof. He was about to get his first attack up. Oh, no, wait a second. This is less than halfway done. Where's that other Evo chamber? Yeah, not, not even close. So I, we're probably going to have plus three. Plus three? Yeah, plus three was going to be done before a 1-1 one, one was finished on these lings. And then plus three armor was going to be done pretty soon as well. So yeah, it's rough. It's rough. Falling behind in the upgrades. Having difficulty defending all these different locations. A really good move, though. You got to give it to Rain for making this move through the eggs. Just recognizing that probably pushing into this area wasn't going to be good uh, to do again. Rotating all the way around is too much of a pain. So just killing off those two eggs and coming down this direction... A really nice move to get into a position that Shine wasn't expecting. And he follows it up brilliantly. Getting his base over uh, in the front and just massing up Templar behind this. This is the scariest part of the game, I think, when you're playing against Protoss. Is when, uh, you know, the Protoss may be mining out of their mineral patches in their main and natural. But they're still running on four gases and so they can pump out an insane amount of templar and it's really difficult to take good trades against the number of templar that are popping out at this time right we've got <laughs> look at how many it's so many nine templar there's only you know six other units or five other units and nine templar that's just what you can afford uh when a game gets to this point uh, it doesn't last for long, of course. This will run out pretty soon, but there is a period in time uh, right around this point where you just have so much gas. He's even mining long distance on this gas, too. It's kind of funny. Anyways, guys, we've got so many games to go into. I don't know why I'm talking about this one so much. It was just a fun game, and I'm endlessly interested in how pro players are playing on Minstrels. So let's jump into game number two. Still got four more to go. Game number two, we've got HBQ spawning here in the top left. 
shine in the bottom right. HBQ. I was interested in checking out this game because we see him in the China versus Korea league. The CKW, which I've made quite a few videos on. If you haven't seen that yet, definitely go check it out. Lots of good games, despite the players not being at the absolute tippity top. Got quite a few great Korean players in there and lots of very strong Chinese talent in that pool as well. So uh, shout out to that series. If you haven't seen it, it's on my channel. And if you enjoyed these longer style videos, the longer form content with uh, multiple games and a lot of commentary, make sure to support it, guys. Uh, my Patreon link is in the description. Every little bit helps, truly. For, for a content creator, for a game that's 25 years old, it is a tough life. But it's made a little bit easier by those people who do choose to support. So I thank you, my Patreon supporters. And if you don't have the ability to support this content, if you're really down and out, uh, I totally understand. Uh, just hit the like button and leave a comment. Doesn't have to be a mean, nasty comment or a super nice one. Even just typing GG will help me out in the algorithm. Get me to more people. Uh, you can also share the video if you are active on social media or, you know, on Reddit or whatever. We've got an 8 racks coming out here for HBQ and a lot of drones are going to be pulled. Not as many as I would expect though. Usually you pull 8 drones to deal with this and he's only pulled 5. Which could be a big problem. You can see he's leaving the drone over at the natural because he's going to build a sunken colony immediately. So he's trying to draw the marines away. But he hasn't started the sunken colony. I guess he's waiting just to see what HBQ will do, and since HBQ is going to retreat, he will not start that sunken colony. He's going to have Lings out in time, and I don't think he lost a single drone. This is bad. HBQ did not fully commit to this. I guess he can fall back behind his wall, but you do kind of need to do damage, I feel like. I, I don't know. Any Terran players out there, let me know. Is this okay for HBQ? I, in my opinion, I, I think you actually need to deal damage. He gets a couple of lings at least. Five marines walking across the map is a little bit scary. But as soon as the lings run around these marines, he's just going to turn and reveal that <laughs> this is not that scary at all. Uh, he is not... He's putting up that... that uh, Art of War style tactic of when you're weak appears strong is over here just walking out on the map with a bunch of naked marines acting like he's tough but really even just two or three lings running into his base right now is a a, ma a very serious problem for hbq and he's gonna bring everything back to deal with that this is perfect for shine he knows where all the marines are he could even get this kill on the SCV. Wow, one SCV kill already. Two SCV kills. Will not get a third, but that's fantastic. And he slowed down the CC just a little bit. So everything is gravy for Shine. Only can transfer four SCVs to the natural as an engineering bay started up. We'll get plus one upgrade on the way. So we know what HBQ wants to do, but He's slowed himself down with the eight racks and he's been slowed down by Shine now. Shine has hurt his economy pretty badly by killing off two early SCVs. It's a significant part of his early economy. About 10% was lost in that engagement and he didn't kill any drones. So I look at this and I feel that we're looking very good for shine this should be a shine victory hbq he's gonna have some time he's gonna have some opportunities maybe where he can try to bring this one back 
but he has to survive the initial mutilisk attack which is going to be coming in soon so this is a three hatch muta with the third hatch at a third base and so it'll be a little slower not as aggressive but much more robust because of the extra gas and the ability to add some drones over here it's possible that he could just go completely all in after getting that third base up and plus one finished you could just pile on the damage however hbq has turrets on the way he's got his four racks plus one build rolling he just started range so it's going to be pretty tough to hold initially however there's a good chance he's going to have enough marines to keep this alive to keep this going three meters flying into the main he's just checking to see if uh, he actually built turrets or not if the turrets were halfway finished or, you know, even 90% done, maybe you can dive in and kill a, an SCV for free. But he sees that that's not going to be a possibility. So bringing all of his mutilists together will rotate over towards this natural. Gonna look for a few snipes, maybe three, four, uh, five SCVs is gonna be good. He misses the first shot, gets the second one. It should be a one shot. Uh, if he's controlling correctly there's another one shot three four five no nope. just four and he loses a muta so not the greatest control there from shine overall and he's gonna go ahead and try to find these marines if he can catch marines at the back oh he almost uh, gets caught there with one of his mutas so having a bit of a hard time that's a good connection Giant, trying to take this fight the best he can. If he kills a few more Marines, he can just dive this. Does kill off quite a few more Marines. He's going forward, but he's losing more mutas than he anticipated. For sure. So this is actually not that bad for HBQ. He will abandon the position. Run home with his medics. A calculated sacrifice there. Eventually, all the medics will end up falling, though. I like the idea, though, of recognizing, like, okay, all these Marines are going to die. Let's just run for it with the medics, try to get them home. But none of them make their way back, and now Shine has control. Going to start to kill some of these supply depots. HBQ coming out. He really doesn't want to let those go. Going to bring some SCVs, it looks like, to try to repair that. Although the SCVs were getting blocked by the Marines, and so he will not be able to keep that alive. And Shine gets that kill. Still, no supply block just yet. Armory is on the way. Lurker upgrade is coming, though. So we're going to have a Valkyrie play. It's going to be countered pretty quickly by Shine's uh, Lurkers. He should be starting his Hive any moment as well. He's got the money for it. And there it is. Hive is coming. They have double star port, but no second gas. So it's pretty clear that he's not going to be going for a bunch of science vessels from this spot. More SCVs are going to go down. Some great control from Shine. Oh, making a little mistake there. Making me eat my words. Good kills here. Very, very good kills. 30 SCVs total remain. Shine still bringing mutas to the front, but he's halted production as he switches into this lurker play. We had a scan on the natural and he saw the hydras popping out. So he's well aware that lurkers are on the field and that he needs a science facility. He immediately starts his second refinery. That's a little bit behind the curve. And so vessels are not gonna be out for some time. Hasn't even started that science facility yet. So he's going to try and push out without the aid of vessels, which can be really scary. Look at these Marines uh, laid out in a long trail. Ooh, the two Valkyries come in and do a lot of damage onto this big clump of Mutas. So many of them are incredibly low. He finds the Lurkers, but the Marines are going to die over on this side of the map. That is brutal. 
still the Valkyries did their work pushing back these mutas and now we're out on the field the lurkers can't easily run up and just start burrowing right in the face nice target fire very nice target fire there the Valkyries are a little bit behind uh, the rest of the armies so they won't be able to hit those mutas as they try to run away scourge coming in gotta target down the scourge oh looks like the scourge all get targeted Valkyries will end up falling but hey they did their job 100% we've only got four mutas left now almost none just one mutalist remains and he's managed to slow this down quite a bit so he's bought himself some good time there's the Valkyrie gonna finish off this last lurker bunker out in the front is very nice that should hold back this small force of lurker and ling oh my gosh nothing here in the natural shines made a pretty big mistake uh, sending these lurkers so far across the map and not being able to deal any damage with them means that he could end up losing his natural which would be a huge swing for hbq i'm gonna run up with the lurkers forcing the marines into the main they have hardly any hp and as the lings dive upon them even with no armor upgrades, he will be able to clear this. More Marines coming across. Could target down another Lurker. Great target fire from these Marines. They are 1-1, one, one, so they can fight pretty well against Lurkers, even without Science Vessel uh, assistance. We just, Okay, there's the Science Facility. We're pretty far behind on Science Vessel production, but he will begin that now. Two Science Vessels on the way. Not enough money, not enough gas for a uh, irradiate upgrade for the irradiate upgrade to start i think he might have been only mining this with one scv up until a moment ago uh, that's the only explanation i can find for why he doesn't have enough gas to build uh two vessels in an irradiate at this point in the game he should have that money so he must not have been mining this for very long uh just having one scv the one that built the gas mining that is not going to bring you very much income so he's continuing to scan he's continuing to pressure at the front has a valkyrie in the main as well gonna try to get a kill on an overlord but now defilers are out two dropships on the way it's anybody's game at this point i thought that shine was crazy far ahead up until this run by you just forced the drones away and almost killed this hatchery things got pretty hectic i still would say that shine is well ahead but it's potentially possible for hbq to find combat potential i used potential twice in that sentence it didn't really make sense but we're gonna roll with it two drop ships heading out of the main gonna load up there's plenty of vision on the map for shine so he may end up seeing this before it gets to his base it's gonna be hard for hbq to thread the needle and find a way in without getting spotted but he may be able to open up a position he may be able to open up a tunnel or a like a oh 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 oh, oh. lings coming out he sees one marine that's a little bit suspicious why do you only have one marine over here where did the rest of your forces go they've all been loaded up into these drops and they're going to be coming in right now shine's going to spot it at this very moment flying into the main though it's going to be undefended everything running back to try and hold all of these marines in the main immediately gunning down one lurker great target fire there spawning pool gonna fall can back up try to kill the defiler mound the spire is also an amazing target it's like he will continue to back up shine's done a good job of keeping the majority of his drones alive pulling them out and he's gonna keep all his buildings alive as well as well only the spawning pool died that is it a little bit of lost mining time nothing else was harmed so i think shine did a fantastic job He's sending out a lot of Hydralis Defiler now, and he has Plague. So let's see if he can land a good Plague on a group of Bio. Nice Irradiate. 
Keeping the scans going, HPQ playing at a high level. Oh, but he didn't fall back far enough and he eats a huge plague. Yikes. Yeah, that's that's kind of like a, a star sense thing. Ugh, where you, you, you should be able to tell just as a Terran player, like, okay, this is the, once I irradiate a defiler, there's like a certain safe distance. If I irradiate it, at this point on the map, if I fall back to here, the Defiler won't be able to make it to me and cast Plague before it dies. But he kind of miscalculated. A bit of a lack of star sense there for HBQ. He eats a huge Plague and that could be a game changer. It isn't just yet, but it could be. Oh boy, he's gonna lose that dropship as well. Drops coming into this base are not gonna go well. Drop over at this third, trying to kill some units. He can hide underneath the Dark Swarm and maybe kill off a building. No, he won't be able to. Oh my gosh, where are the lurkers? They're underneath this Overlord. He didn't see it and gets absolutely mangled going up this hill. He does end up killing the lurkers in the end, but he loses two, three science vessels. And a counterattack is coming. One medic for all of these marines. It's not going to keep these alive for very long. But they're doing a relatively good job of fighting this back. Plus a tank is coming up. Some more marines and two more medics going to push these hydralists away. So the counterattack is not successful. And Shine sitting on three bases still. Hasn't transferred drones over to this fourth just yet. Having a bit of a struggle. There we go. Catches a defiler coming out. Again, falling back to a safe distance. Gotta give it a little bit of space to eventually wear down to the irradiate. You can't be sending that uh, back and, uh, you know, not getting for far enough away. Allowing more plagues to go down. Could be a death sentence. Look at that. Sending in a science vessel. Uh, losing it already. He's got one more. He's gonna make a run for it over on this center right. There's no Nidus here or anything. So if he just kills this last lurker. Oh, that lurker got a huge spine at the end. But this eraser trick is insane. Oh my gosh, so many kills on these drones. Still 43 workers. It's acceptable. Shine just needs to transfer a few out of his main and natural and he should be okay on income. But that was, that was a lot of damage. Still, I'm not sure who is gonna win this game. It it still seems like Shine is ahead. 118 to 116, yeah, he's definitely in a good spot. But HBQ is a wild man. He just goes for it, dude. He just, he just attacks in. He just doesn't give a care, man. He, he doesn't care at all. Defiler making its way towards the natural. This could actually be the play of the game. Oh, just running it again. Oh my gosh, he just stims and runs in. And Shine is not ready for this. He's gonna kill all the links that are coming out and he could just snipe down this uh, hatchery. Okay, he doesn't have the ability to get this because one more draw, uh, Dark Swarm will come down and the links will clear everything. It's a little bit unfortunate. Oh, but the eraser trick at the natural is insane. How many kills on that? 12. 12 kills on that retreating science vessel. Looks like he'll retreat right into these hydras, but spotting that is pretty big. Just the fact that he saw that is really important. Great plague. Could throw down a dark storm as well, but looks like it'll just fall back. Pretty good damage for HBQ. Down to 34 drones. It's skimpy for Shine. It's got some Scourge over here. Do we have dropships anymore? I don't think so. I don't think we have dropships. Just a couple of science vessels. The science vessel count has been kept very low. Hardly any science vessels in this game. Another stim and run for this base. Is he gonna be able to do massive damage once again? One lurker on the high ground. He's just gonna run straight by this. <laughs> He's so crazy. HBQ is a wild man. Just, just running into the base again. 
and it's gonna work for like the third time and it's actually gonna deal a huge amount of damage army's making its way up as this gets clean he won't kill the the hatchery once again shine's gonna save that these tanks may never get getting killed as well tank counts not looking that high just yet we've got plus one and it seems that Shine wants to switch into Ultra. An Ultra switch at this point. Pretty crazy. 47 drones to 46 SCVs. Another base comes up. Oh, that's actually... That's hilarious. He floated the command center. You don't usually see that happen before the refinery uh, runs out. But there you have it. Another two drops gonna be sent around the bottom side i guess but there is a ling that's gonna spot oh plus the overlord there that's kind of bad shine should be able to shut this down easily marines moving out on the map funny how he leads with the the medics ah get spotted there as well a cc in bottom left hbq is wild he is a crazy person. And he actually manages to unburrow. With that uh, little army pick back up. And he can go forward once again. Try to find damage with these two dropships. I'm not sure if he'll be able to. But he's just transferring SCVs down to bottom left. It's pretty funny. I wonder if he'll get away with it. Oh, here comes the drops. One of them goes down. One of them will unload. Over here, maybe? Okay, okay. Uh, that's probably not a good place either. Oh, it's out of range of the Sunken, so I guess it's pretty sweet. Yeah, you'll be able to kill some drones for sure. That's all Marines, by the way. Not even a single medic in there. Gonna spread out. He loses the dropship. Moving the tanks forward. He's gonna try and start a big push going this direction. But gets shut down immediately. He'll have to back up. These uh, marines that have just been plagued are not going to be much help at all. Somehow he's mining down here. Don't ask me how. Not sure how he's getting away with that. That's a pretty good tank count uh, on the top side. Not too many at the front, though. It's pretty hard to push into a Zerg player with this low of a tank count. You need a, kind of an overwhelming number. You need like 10, 12 tanks. And slow, it's like uh, leapfrog, slow push towards the the Zerg. Uh, make it so that they can't even trade with you. They can't really do anything. Otherwise, they're just gonna keep walking out with. Oh, oh man! All those science vessels go down. Plague science vessels dying so quickly to these Hydras. Yeah, they're they're just gonna be able to run right up on you and, and throw down all the the spells with the defilers if you only have this many tanks like five tanks it's just not gonna be enough we need we need a higher count still only plus one as well getting up on the high ground gonna lose another vessel the tanks are gonna start to hit the the uh, ultras but again everything just runs right up on top of you and the ultras will push everything back I'm gonna start to lose tanks and every time you can trade ultras and links for tanks, it's fantastic. Oh, man. <clears throat> another radiate goes down on another defiler. But this army gets pushed back once again. I think this is getting out of control. Really feels like Shine has HBQ's number now. It's going to be really difficult for him to gain any kind of ground against what shine is putting out at this point plus two will finish soon but just sending in a small group of lings going to potentially pick off some tanks two tanks go down an amazing trade for the zerg player you can kill two three four tanks for like two groups of lings it's amazing pushing in a little bit towards six o'clock does have an angle on these sunken colonies. More tanks over in the center left are going to get picked off pretty much for free. And Lings are basically free at this point. You don't really need minerals in this matchup anymore. It's all about the gas. 
Going after the Science Whistle C. He is going to get those. The Marines hold pretty strong against the pure Hydralis force coming down this ramp. And you can actually fight with Hydras like this uh, under Dark Swarm, but uh, you need actually more tanks to push that back. Now the tank number is getting a little bit higher, but four is still not going to cut it. We don't have any fire bats in this army either, so this will eventually be cleaned up. Ling's just going to jump right on top of everything. Force the uh, siege tanks to deal a lot of damage to each other and the a marine medic. And he will be able to push this away. Small armies moving around for HBQ, but nothing substantial that can actually uh, win fights. And so these little forces of lings that are slipping in everywhere are going to continue to deal bits of damage, killing off tanks, killing off SCVs now, going after command centers. And that's all great damage. That's all basically free damage for Shine. These small groups of lings are nothing to him. He can keep sending them in all day as long as they get some sort of value. It's great. And the value that they've been getting is... It's more than great. It's, it's fantastic. It's perfect. It's exactly what he wants to keep doing. Another Defiler going to come up. It has the energy to throw down another Plague. Another Vessel goes down as well. He's never been able to keep a very high Vessel count. I've noticed in this game. Oh! Marines come up that ramp and just get massacred. Let's see, nine kills on that one Lurker. And some Ultras are going to make their way down into the bottom left as well. We're just about at the tap, tap out point for HBK. He tried so hard to break bottom center over and over and over again, but he never brought the critical mass of tanks necessary to uh, deal damage to that base. The drop play was pretty good. HBQ, his run buys were excellent. Uh, recognizing every time that Shine was putting pressure onto him that he didn't have enough back at home to defend his little marine attacks. Uh, that was great, but now Shine is breathing down his neck. He's diving in on his base, hitting his main. Oh gosh, this command center just about goes down. You gotta bring the queen at this point. Shine is so far ahead. I can't believe he's not building a queen. He's breaking into the natural. He's killing off marines. He's sending waves and waves of Ling Ultra to just crack down on what remains of the Terran base. 88 supply is all that's left to the 142 with lots of Ultras coming and more bases on the way. You can see he's building bases under the command centers of his opponent as HBQ processes this loss. It is all over. Quickly, it, it, it's interesting how quickly things fall apart once the Terran player reaches a certain point. Now, he was able to produce Marines and keep attacking, keep pumping out tanks and vessels for so long, right up until a critical moment where everything just stopped being effective. And the Lings and Ultras flooding across the map were impossible to continue to hold on against. And yes, he's keeping the 12 o'clock base alive for now, but things are completely out of control. The main base is gone. And I'm not sure why we still have HBQ in this game. Yeah, it's only going to last for a few more seconds. He taps out. GG is called HBQ beaten by Shine, but it was not an easy task. Almost a 30-minute game. Shine struggling to deal with all the craziness that HBQ brought to the table. I don't think we have any more games from HBQ, but more Shine games coming right up. We keep some moving here, going on to game number three with Sin spawning in the top right-hand corner. Shine in the bottom right. And... We're getting into another ZVP. That one versus Rain was quite close. I hope that Shine doesn't stay with that layer style. I know some people are are fans of it. Um, 
if I remember correctly, I think Shun is a pretty big fan of the layer style. I'm personally just not a huge fan. I, I feel like it can be strong if you are making the game super scrappy. You keep attacking and attacking and attacking and you just don't let the Protoss have any air. But generally, it's just... It's very hard to get any damage going. And to, as soon as the Protoss player gets some wind, as soon as the Protoss player gets you off their back for a second, they're just going to start running away with the game. Oh, man, Sins wasn't able to block that. Really felt like he had a good move there. What he did was he came in, he looked and saw that there was creep. And rather than revealing the probe so that Shine could throw down a spawning pool, because if you see the probe, it's already in your base. You don't even bother usually sending out your drone on 12 or 11. You usually just you just grab your spawning pool and then start sending your drones out to take bases a little bit later. But wow, three hatch before uh, before pool. Okay, he saw that there was a nexus. That's why he did that. I see. Um, yeah, so he came in. He saw that there was creep and he pulled back immediately so that he didn't know that the probe was there so that he could just block this and if he just blocks this if he puts down a pylon for instance and he sees that there's no spawning pool he gets away with the nexus first and he slows down the hatcheries by a lot like you're not gonna kill that with you're not gonna kill a pylon with drones right and you're also not gonna take your other hatchery you know, over here or something and have three hatches all spread out like that. So kind of a missed opportunity, but we're going to be accelerating extremely quickly in this game. This is about the heaviest eco game you can possibly get in a ZVP. Nexus first versus three hatch before gas. It doesn't get greedier than that. No lings have been made. And this Hydralis Den is going to get scouted. So, I'm not sure how many Hydras are really going to be made. He could just make a few to go and kill the wall, I guess. Go kill that gateway. Now, there's not going to be many Zealots out for a while. Or he could just drone. He could just sit here, drone super hard. Maybe try to hit a timing before... There is a uh, Templar out with Storm. Hmm, okay, no no Corsairs either. No Stargate. I guess that makes sense. He saw that there was a Hydra Den. So he knows that there's not going to be Scourge or Mutas. He immediately gets a Citadel and Double Gate. There's some big brain stuff going on in this game. This is a little, little bit beyond me. But I'm loving it. I love the the mind games going on and the reactions that are playing out in this game are definitely very high level. What if you Hydras are being made? He's got four more in production. There's no probe on the map, so he can't know that there's this many Hydras. He kind of has to assume that Hydras are coming, though, and make more cannons. He's only made two. I don't know about this. I think Sins is going to die. He's got to make way more cannons. He's relying on just making a bunch of zealots and having speed early. And I, d I don't think that's going to be enough. Speed is fast, but that's a lot of hydras. Three zealots. Another two are about to pop. So he's going to have five zealots total. But yeah, he just runs forward and kills the cannon. Oh, I don't know about this since I think you might have been a little too greedy. Another cannon's gonna finish. Okay, maybe he holds. Maybe just barely. Hatchery. Over at the natural. 
You can't really hit the forge. He will soon. But Zealot Speed's gonna finish. And he wasn't so greedy that he built a ton of gateways. He's only got two in the main. He's able to get out enough Zealots. Seven are done. Four cannons. Okay, I, I don't think he needs these extra cannons now. I think he needs gateways. Cancel? Oh, definitely cancel this cannon. 100% cancel this one. 29 drones is all that Shine can get out for the moment. So he is pretty low on that drone count. Evolution chamber at the front, making this a very tight wall, but you can still slip through here, I think. I think you can go this way, as long as that doesn't get made into an egg. As soon as that's an egg, you can only have one zealot on this sunken colony, I believe. Position is very nice. Very, very nice. This is a gap. Zealots can go through, but if you move... Yeah, if you have an egg there, I don't think zealots can get by that. There might be a tiny little gap where they can go this way, but I'm not sure. Probably still not going to be worthwhile. He's building double cannon. What is going on? Okay, there is a spire in the main. Wow. Okay. This is big brain stuff from Sins. The fact that he didn't go Corsair, he knows that there is a possibility uh, of airplay. He's got to preempt that by going for those extra cannons. Diving into the third base. It's not going well. Quite a few zealots die, and I think one drone, two hydras, ended up falling down. So, pretty decent defense. That's so many cannons. That is so many cannons. Archon is coming out. And so, I wonder how much Shine will commit to mutas. Because it looks like he's going to make a lot. It looks like he's going to make 10 mutas. N yeah, he's going to make 7, 8. He might go all the way to 11. We'll see. <clears throat> I'm not sure if he can see those. I don't think he can see the cannons in the mineral line. But maybe he did. More gateways are coming up. I think that Sins has the perfect response. He hasn't even gone into Storm yet. He's just making Archons. If he comes across the map with a big number of Zealots and three Archons, something something along those lines, he is going to be able to smash. And I don't think that his main can be broken. Triple Cannon plus an Archon? Yeah, you're not going to get in there. I'm sorry, I don't care how good your micro is. Alright, here he comes. Into the main. He could kill this Archon. Oh, big hits, big hits. Oh my gosh, so much damage on this Muta stack. And he's kind of trapped right now. Gonna fly back out this direction, losing a couple of Mutas there. He killed one Archon, but he took so much damage. That was really painful to watch. See, the Muta stack is incredibly low. Two Archons in the main. Some Dragoons are starting to come out now as well. Lurker upgrade is producing, but it's going to be a while before Lurkers are on the field. He's already got Robotic Support Bay. Observatory is on the way. And... There's going to be a huge two-base timing coming soon. A massive two-base timing is coming up very shortly from uh, Sins. And I don't know if Shine's going to be ready for it. He has the drone numbers now. And he's going to go ahead and take his fourth. But I doubt he'll even try to saturate that. He might send a few drones over there. But I, I don't think he can afford to make a round of drones. 48 is enough for this many bases. You just take a few out of this mineral line, a few out of here, a couple out of here as well. That should mineral smooth pretty, pretty decently. Sin's being very cautious about mutas, even though he 
fully deflected that. And we've got lurkers out in the front now to de to uh, contend with. Sins needs to get up on that high ground. And I'm a little bit surprised that he allowed Shine to get over here. I would have loved to see him just standing on this high ground and making it hard for Shine to set up this contain. So he's going to send a probe over to this base doesn't look like it this seems foolhardy as long as shine knows about this it's, this is an even worse area to break out of like it looks like he wants to go up this ramp but that seems that seems crazy to me more lurkers are being made this is getting worse and worse by the moment since has zero Templar with Storm. He has an all Gateway Man army with no Storm. How is this going to work for him? I am so confused. We are 1-1 one, one to the 1-1 one, one of Zerg. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good at all. Since what are we doing? Um, we are really questioning the decisions right now. All just fighting units no templar no storms this storm boy is without storm it certainly is not making a lot of sense uh, he's gonna have one opportunity to break up this ramp i think 10 drones are in production if he doesn't break out now the income is gonna be insane he has to keep all the observers alive the observers are so important what are you doing You're just sending them forward since is gonna lose all the observers there they go the observers are gone. And now he can't break out. Well, he's going to try anyway. Zealots are pushing in. Dragoons are doing a decent job layering in the damage. But the lurkers are just going to do endless amounts of DPS to all of these zealots. Dragoons are pushing out. Getting on top of this stuff. And it looks like Sins may just break out. Barely. It's only because Shine made such a big wave of drones to send to bottom left. And Sins needs to go now. He has to go and kill. Like, we, we need to walk across the map and kill the natural. That is the only way, that is the only method in which Sins will win this game. And we're already seeing a lot of Hydras pop. Oh boy. It's just mass sunken at the front. Shine's figured it out. He went and checked for the third, and he sees that there's no third. So he knows that he is in a lot of trouble. We better keep this observer alive. So important that this observer stays alive. He's just going to send it in. If Shine had the presence of mind to target that, it would be very good, but he doesn't. The, uh, some Hydra's coming from behind. Some Lurkers as well. The Dragoons are going to spread. And try to deal with that. All the sunken colonies die before really getting any damage. He needs to send everything in. If I'm Sins here, just get on this high ground. That is number one priority. We need to get up this ramp. Don't allow lurker eggs on the ramp. Do not allow lurker eggs on the ramp. Get up on that high ground. What are we doing since we're fighting with these dragoons? Straight up, Hydra versus Dragoon is not a great trade. He will, however, dive on top with just pure Zealot. Absolute clown of a game, actually. No Templar at all. Sins takes the victory. What did I even watch? My goodness. Oh, I mean, this is just so clown. This is, this is, this is absolute clown. This is a clown game. How did he win without Storm? Just all in two base push from Sins. Look, he's out of money. But he somehow managed to just YOLO up that ramp against all those lurkers, lost every single observer, took the high ground and then went across the map to kill. Oh, what is going on? What am, what what are we even doing? This is this all comes down to Shine 
making this round of drones right as everything was pushing out. <clears throat> so he has a overlord near this base, but he doesn't quite see it. He doesn't quite see the Nexus. And so he doesn't know that Sins is taking that base. You saw that Sins moved his whole, whole army over here. What do you... He wasn't going to break through here. So as Shine, <laughs> you're thinking, okay, you're taking your third. That makes sense that Sins would be taking his third. You're probably up there. Pylon, Nexus, you know, three, four cannons. That's a lot of money that you're not going to be able to dump into gateway units. But... That's not at all what Sins was doing. Sins was just, just massing Zealots. Zealots and Dragoons. And so when Shine makes this round of drones, he really makes a huge mistake. Because what he should be doing is making huge amounts of I just I I'm ba baffled I'm baffled that he pushed up this hill it makes no sense that he was able to take this fight look at how many hydras are up here there's that round of drones 10 drones in production what is this air armor please tell me that he didn't research air armor Oh my god, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Did he? Did he? Wait. Okay, I was gonna say. Yeah, he did get singularity charge first. I was like, did he accidentally get air armor instead of singularity charge? But no, thankfully. My poor Zerg heart. I almost... I almost cracked there. If I had seen Sins beat Shine with no storm and no Dragoon range, I might have switched races. It's just that broken. So it was a nice play by Sins to completely predict. Like he had no vision on this spire, but he just had a feeling that there was going to be a big Mutalist transition. He countered it very well. Not totally up on the upgrades, but <clears throat> as you can see, he has plus one on the way. Kind of forgot about this other forge though. Like... <laughs> I wonder if this was... This must have been a misclick. Like, he went to click the forge and make armor, and he accidentally clicked the cybernetic score and started armor. That's the only thing that makes sense to me, because, look, these started at, like, pretty much the same time, right? So... I don't think anything else in the world makes sense, aside from that. Such a funny game. Such a hilarious game. Protoss is Protoss is just such a funny race, guys. How hilarious. Yeah, he sees this move up. He's like, okay. I see you taking a third. I I I got it. I know what we need to do. We need to get this fourth up. We need to get a, a round of drones. You know, we'll go up to 60 drones. We've got a huge amount of hydras on high ground. We just make sure there's no escape like zealots running out on this side and then suddenly it's just mass zealot archon and dragoon taking this high ground as plus two finishes i can't he did this without two two he was waiting for two two but he finished air armor He finished air armor, and he still did this. I mean, we send, we should send all the hydras in. Obviously, if, if there's no storms, there's no reason to hold anything back. You just, you just send everything in. But he's holding back some units because he's expecting storm. 
So that's a little bit of a mistake there, obviously. These these hydras just sitting here, they should all be just bashing away at those zealots. But you can see he's only got two hydras in production. That's because this huge round of drones. If he wasn't building that round of drones, he would have had you know, 10 more hydras arriving at the front during this fight. So yeah, not taking the fight with all the hydras, the biggest mistake from Shine. Clearly misunderstanding the situation, thinking that there was a third base. Um, yeah, it's a little bit rough now. Got to target down the Archon as well. That Archon's just tanking so much, dealing so much damage. He just shoves right through. And then immediately upon this, you see this army and it wins. I mean, right now you need to be making sunken colonies. Because there's only one way that Sins wins this game. <laughs> he, he doesn't have a third. He needs to win within the next like two minutes. He's got a, a two minute window to win this game. Uh... Otherwise, he's just going to completely mine out and lose. So killing this base, while it's good in theory, and you're going to kill, you know, three hatcheries worth of production. If Shine holds this ramp and he holds over at this choke as well, he's still going to have money in his main. He's still going to be on three bases and <laughs> Sins will be long distance mining in no time flat so he has to attack the natural there's no choice there is absolutely no choice and i think the the switch in shine's head activated just a little bit too late because right here it should be it should be activating we should be figuring this out but we can see it took a full like 30 seconds before he realized and I I think this was the the moment when the switch activated right he came in he saw no nexus and then he was like oh <laughs> we, need, we need to set up this defense like now also if he had built all the sunkins back here it might have been a different story if he builds five sunkins right there it would be faster for one and it would be harder to kill of course he would lose his hatchery but he's got a hatchery over here he's got these hatcheries and like i said it's it's a two minute window we don't have a lot of time anything you can do to buy time is amazing he should be building lurkers uh you know set up a, a lurker wall uh, this lurker over here is going to die in a second, but if you have a couple of lurkers around and you just try to snipe these observers, build some scourge. That's what I would recommend. Cancel this queen's nest. Build a scourge. Pair of scourge. Get your lurkers out. Try to snipe these observers. If you get one good observer snipe right as the army's coming in, you can delay for minutes. You can delay for actual minutes. And like I said, two, three minutes. <laughs> we don't have that kind of time. Since needs to get it done now. Yeah, building these sunkins out in the front. This this just didn't work. A valiant fight from Shine, but <laughs> you, just, you can't. You cannot fight the Zealot Man. The Zealot Man get, will get you. This This feels like the type of game that I would lose. And I would, I would be so tilted afterwards that I would have to go and lie down. Guys, we're going to jump into our next one. I'm spending a lot of time analyzing these games, but I'm having a lot of fun with this. I hope you are too. Let's jump into the next one. Hey guys, I'm back and ready to continue on with this series. Uh, but before we jump into this game, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the ASL round of four. So spoiler alert. Before I go any further, I can hop forward a little bit. So round of four was a little bit disappointing. I was there. I was in the crowd. Uh, the games were very, very quick. Uh, so, you know, it, it was a little bit sad. 
uh, to travel all the way there, get to the studio, sit down, and uh, have the games be over so fast. I, I wanted to see some really epic games, and there was a another guy there who we coordinated uh, hanging out at the event. His name's Martin, so shout out to him. Uh, he came all the way from Prague, so I really felt bad for him uh, that there weren't better games, but honestly, he saved the trip for me. He made the trip uh, a lot more fun. Uh, just being there with somebody who is into StarCraft and who is down to hang out and uh, go out for drinks and uh, barbecue afterwards was excellent. It was a really great experience. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I can't recommend it enough. Uh, and in fact, I want to experience more of it and I hope that uh, we can get more people to come out to the next round of four uh, in, I guess it's going to be spring SSL season. I'm not sure what they're going to call it. SSL 2025 spring or something like that. I wish they would go back to the numbering system, but I guess they don't want to restart that SSL one or something. So, yeah, guys, come into the Discord channel. We're going to be organizing a Hangout event. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, it, it's one thing to get to the ASL or to the SSL and, you know, be there in person. That is a huge, huge experience. But being there with friends and having a bunch of people to hang out with and chat with and hang out with after the event as well is... It's glorious, guys. So I want you to experience it as well. Uh, join the Discord in the description. Uh, there's a link there. And uh, if you guys can make it, it would be fantastic. Don't wait forever uh, to just come down and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful game and this awesome tournament. Uh, you never know. Like, you might be thinking, oh, yeah, this is going to be around forever. But... SS ASL just changed its name last season. I don't know if that's an indicator of uh, problems with the company or what that indicates, but um, you never know what can happen. We might end up seeing, you know, ASL go out of business. Uh, SSL go out of business. Soup Star League, um, you know, might not be profitable. It might be one of these com companies like Twitch where they haven't made a profit in years and uh, they may end up having to make some massive changes. So. Definitely. Don't wait. Come get into the Discord channel and come hang out with us if you can. Now jumping into this game because some things have gone on. We've got that eight racks uh, from Midas, who is the bar barcode Terran player. Shine is just barely holding on. Hasn't really lost a lot of drones. He's in fact gonna run one back home. I guess he lost two of his drones. I'm now gonna jump on top of this bunker. Not the greatest cleanup on these bunkers, but with just two links attacking the SCV. Oh, he's gonna run by now. He actually lost a lot more links than I would have expected. This is a full bunker? No, it's only three Marines, but still killing off so many links. Now I can finally go across the map and do some pressure. Two drones were killed. I don't know if that makes up for the the eight racks. Uh, but as long as he holds on, he doesn't let the lings in. Oh, God. The lings just run straight on in. Going to jump right on top of these marines. A nice move pulling the marine through the, the, the wall there. And he actually holds. He holds. He kills every ling and he holds. Midas doing a pretty good job with this eight racks. The double bunker was pretty sneaky. A slow bunker push. He wasn't able to get in range. But he still put on enough pressure that Shine just decided to go for the kill on that. Now he's got a drone over in the top right hand corner. He's got his layer on the way, but it's quite late. This is a very late layer. Uh, 5 minute 30. We're still not finished the layer. Usually we're going to be making Link or going to be making Mutas before 6 minutes. So uh, it seems like we're going to be making the the spire at around that time which is quite a significant delay this is going to give so much more time for Midas to get his academy out he's going to start plus one soon 
hopefully he he will not build turrets right away. Uh, recognize that there aren't going to be or there isn't going to be a mutilus timing uh, at a usual moment. He's going to be much much later. Just look at that. The spire just started, but he can't really tell. He didn't get in the main base, so he wasn't seeing how many drones were being made in the main or. Uh, how much gas was being mined or anything like that. He didn't get a view on the layer, so there's a little bit of ambiguity. Seems like Midas has a pretty good idea, though. And he's just not going to build turrets for the time being. We should be seeing a uh, commsat coming up soon so that he can scan the main and figure out when this spire is going to finish. But he's done pretty well for himself, honestly. Char Shine, Shine is in a pretty rough position. He's slowed down a lot. His timing sucks for the Zmitas. And the only thing that's really going for him is that he's got his third base up already. Which, in the grand scheme, is not that big of a deal. We've got a pretty big force of Marines out already. It's a three racks play. As a follow-up, Stim just finished. He's gonna, oh, it's about to finish, and he's gonna start uh, range in a moment. So pretty soon he can move out. You can't really move out until range is done. Otherwise, the mutas will just dominate you. He gets the scan off, and he sees the timing. The mutas are on the way now. Eight mutas in production. We'll get his uh, missile turrets up in time over at the natural. Starting them a little bit later. At the main, of course. I don't know what that SCV is doing. He's like in the mineral patch. Just kind of chilling there. Mutas are going to follow these Marines. Uh-oh. Remember what I was talking about? How uh, Marines, they kind of get dominated by Mutas? Uh, we might be seeing that in a moment. That's six Mutas. Put together the rest of the pack. He has some Lings out as well. You just start picking at these Marines. And there's not much they can do about it. At least until that range is done. He's trying to buy time by just stimming and running back and forth. And he might just barely have bought himself enough time. Yeah, it looks like that's just about to finish. And Shine's not going to be able to punish this at all, unfortunately. There it is. Range is done. Now these Marines can uh, truly fight against the Mutalis. And unfortunate for Shine, he wasn't able to just pick off a bunch of those before... That upgrade came online. Now heading down towards the natural. Okay, he's going to turn around. I didn't think he had anything over at top right to, to help to defend. So he does need to be vigilant of where and, and cognizant of where these Marines are. He's forced out a lot of stims. And so the, the overall energy on the medic has to be very low. Yeah, just 36 left. Quite a few mutas end up going down in this, but eventually this will be clean. The map has now been cleansed of the human filth. And with eight mutas remaining on high HP, he will be able to put some pressure on finally. Continuing to make mutas as plus one is finishing up. See if that's uh, correct. Yeah, just about done here. Plus one is finished for the Marines and plus one armor is gonna be on the way. Good position to fight for Shine just gonna lose one mutilus. Second mutilus does fall, but he will have to be backing up away from this reinforcement train. These fights can get really one sided if you start to overwhelm your opponent in ZVT. It's very rare that a fight will end up. Uh, with one side, or with both sides having hardly anything left. It's usually one side completely dominating. And everything on the other team just com just dies out. Diving in, killing quite a few SCVs and getting rid of some of these turrets. But Midas is on the war path. He's heading up towards top right. He's going to get some overlord kills on his way up there. And the mutas are returning. I'm going to go ahead and chase down some of these Marines. This is a great position to jump on the Marines. There's only four Marines that can fire. Doesn't really dive on that too hard, though. Now the Marines are grouped up, and it's tough to engage with this. 
And so he'll have to force out some stims. Yeah, this is not a good fight. Yeah, that is really not a good fight for Shine. But he just wants to clear this up as quickly as possible. He killing off a lot of mutas. Good targeting there for Midas. The transition is on the way. Hive is coming up. Got a sunken over here at top right. That's kind of a useless sunken, honestly, because the Marines could just walk around this. Not sure exactly why he wanted to build that sunken. Maybe he thought that that Marine group was a little bit scarier. And he was going to need a sunken colony to just barely survive, but not the case. He's managed to clear up everything in a Soliki esque fashion, just with pure Ling and Muta. Now he comes in, he sees the science vessels. Sorry guys, we just had a bit of a disk space issue, so I'm picking up where I left off. 11 mutas chasing this bio group out onto the map. Midas has irradiate now and oh my god, is that going to do a lot of damage? Holy, that was only one irradiate as well. Still has another one locked and loaded in the chamber just in case these mutas want to come back in for some more and the lurkers are not quite done. He's got a little opportunity here to dive in, but he loses his medics. And now there's only uh, just pure Marines. Pure Marines is not even going to beat two sunken colonies. This is some more of his mutus, but at least now there's no irradiate to kill any of these lurkers. There are three lurkers spawning here in the top right as well. And with the hive done, should be able to connect these two bases up via Nidus network. And so Shine, on the back foot, he did pretty well in the early game. But it's about time for Midas to take charge, to take the lead, and start to dictate the pace of this game. Maybe one vessel went down? Actually didn't see that. A vessel might have been caught coming across the map, but we're here now with three vessels at the front. And look at this physics lab immediately. He's only produced maximum four vessels. Here comes vessel five and six, but I think we're going to go directly into a bunch of battle cruises, which is pretty insane. Midas going to get caught moving out with a small group of Marines. He's got a few more left uh, at the base, though. This third base going to come up pretty quickly. And Midas going to keep on irradiating at the natural while he's taking this third base. He pushed back those lings. That was a very large group of lings that was just thrown away by Shine. And now he doesn't have any mutas at home for uh, some sort of drop defense. An interesting situation we're having here. Some Scourge moving out on the map. Is he going to catch one of these? Oh, he almost gets both of them. Oh, just barely not getting both. A little bit unfortunate there, there for Shine. That was a very well-timed move with those Scourge, knowing that it's likely time for another round of vessels to be coming out. And sending four Scourge to catch those smart, smart stuff from our bag of builds. Shine moving forward with these lurkers, but the lurkers were actually coming from up here. Oh my gosh. Okay, he's got some more lurkers back at home. Those three lurkers were the ones that were pulled back. Ooh, that lurker doesn't quite make it into the mineral line. This one is going to get picked off as well, but back at home, seems like Midas wasn't paying attention to these Marines. He was paying more attention to this attack and ends up losing the majority of his Marines over in top right. Which is a pretty rough loss. Muta's chasing these vessels and we've got Scourge en route. Can he get all the kills? He gets two of these three vessels and I think that's all the vessels that are left. There's one vessel. There's another one. Two vessels total. But Battlecruisers are now out on the field. Spots it with the Overlord. Not sure if he's noticed this yet. A lot has been going on. Shine might be... A little bit taxed at this point. Trying to put everything together. He's got the hatcheries going. Adding on that Ultralisk cavern. I don't see a, many Scourge in production right now. So 
Things could get out of control as these battle cruisers start to hit the main base. We'll see. The fly forward gets one of those two vessels, and there's only one vessel remaining, so he won't need to keep reproducing a Hydralis like he has been doing. Coming up for the first plague, it gets one of the two battle cruisers. Both of these have two kills. I assume those are all overlords. It's going to force back the overlords into the main base. Open up a path where maybe drops could get in. There's a pretty decent defensive position there. But let's see if he can find a route because he's actually making two drop ships already. Two more battle cruisers pop out as those two first ones fall. It's still a big commitment from Shine to kill those off, though. Ooh, diving in. There's no Defiler over at this base, so he just busts right through. There's the Defiler coming up now, but maybe he can still kill this hatchery. Not a lot of links here. They don't really have the upgrades. Plus one armor is done, but plus two attack is finished for these Marines, and they're going to be gunning down links very efficiently. If he has to fight un without the Dark Storm present, Lurkers are going to be brought forward finally. It seems like he was being a bit stingy with the Lurkers after how many Marines he killed. You definitely can understand it, but you do still have to keep producing those. You can't just save everything for Ultras. Drops coming in, uh, hitting this main base while the Battle Cruisers are over here at the Natural. This is going to cause a lot of ruckus for sharp to deal with okay that's not the evo evo chamber creating or researching a uh, carapace this is the all-important evo chamber right here cannot allow that one to die looks like he will be saving it for now hydra morphing itself into a lurker in the main base may end up losing that egg does finally pick off the two bcs that are chilling out in front of the natural, but two more drops making their way up into the top right. I don't know if Shine is ready for this. What is that? Six Hydras pop out? These don't have any upgrades at all. Aside from plus one Carapace, he does pop through a Defiler, but he needs to consume, not run the links forward. He will consume a couple of drones, but now that the Nidus Canal is dead, what can he really do to stop this? At the same time, wow, these Marines are still alive in the main base, and GG is called Shine Taps Out Midas. Takes this victory, just getting pretty crazy. This guy is a high-level Terran player, as you guys can see. Already on four bases. Pretty interesting to go into battle cruisers that quickly. That was after just, what, six? He made six vessels. And then four battle cruisers, and then four dropships. Made for an intense match. Made for an intense amount of pressure. Right as Shine was trying to take his fourth base. So much was going on at that moment. Would be very hard to deal with all that at the same time. Midas makes it super tough on our Zerg Pro. And we've still got one more game. I'm excited to see what Midas will bring out. If he's able to get into a good position uh, during mid-game, like he did this one, will he be able to crack Shine again? Or will Shine pull out something crazy in the early game to make sure he doesn't fall victim to this crazy style? that Midas is showing the very early battle cruisers, the aggressive drops looking real scary. Let's see what he can do coming up in our final game. Here we are in the final game between Shine and Midas. Final game of this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed this cast so far. I'm trying to do more long form videos like this. And just happened to come across a long string of shine games but i assume we're going to be getting a huge amount of flash replays uh, this week and next week since he's been grinding it up on the ladder and playing a whole bunch of show matches it might be hard to find ladder replays from flash actually because he has been playing ton of show matches 
I was just recently watching, or just before I came back to this cast, I was watching Flash versus Larva. Uh, them just playing some sort of scrimmage or just practice game, something like that. And man, Flash was looking insanely good in that series. Uh, Larva was banging his head against the keyboard. He was so frustrated and having such a hard time against him. So I'm hoping we get some replays. I might, if there's none, even try to cast a first person view. I don't know. I, I haven't really done that before, but if there's some great game, one or two great games between Larva and Flash, I, I just don't want to miss out on that, man. I, I watched it briefly, but I might have to go through the VODs and see if there's anything worth your guys' time. If there's anything worth casting, I'll definitely consider it. Pretty early pool coming out of Shine in this game. Must have been an over pool as we're getting the hatchery in the natural now. I've been messing around on stream quite a bit with 12 pool or 11 pool. Excuse me, 11 pool, 12 gas, 12 hatch, which is a Soma build uh, into two hatch muta where you only have three drones mining minerals in the natural and three drones, of course, mining both gases. And you just build pure muta and try to break your opponent uh, just with overall micro skill. And, uh, you know, eventually you might mix in lings, you might... Uh, go for a uh, stab in to the natural with links, try to pick off uh, turrets, or if there's a bunker, try to run by the bunker, get up into the main base, uh, swing the fight with the ground forces as well as you're just battling turrets. It's, it's kind of a fun style, I've got to admit. And I have been getting some wins with it. I'm figuring out the limitations of the build as well. One of the big limitations I found is that building a... a an eBay on the ground uh, where you're supposed to be taking your hatchery uh, will shut down the build pretty darn hard. It's uh, kind of a hard counter, I would say. So that can be quite rough. Now, getting into this game, big surround on these Marines. Gonna kill them all off. That is really unfortunate, but as long as he doesn't lose too many SCVs, it's not the end of the world. This is some sort of 1-1-1 one, one, one that we're seeing. Or maybe it's a... Wait, is Midas going for a mech build? He might be. This Ling... Pair of Lings hiding to the south is... Kind of cheeky. That might actually come up and kill this Marine. And possibly the SCV building the command center as well. Does he see that now? I think he might... Oh, there it is. Now he sees it. Yeah, that's super annoying. Midas going to send his vultures back home, but I don't think he can save this marine. Well, maybe he can. Okay. Spoke too soon. The uh, Ling got stuck. Wasn't moving for a moment. Now we have a spire on the way. Sunken colony at the front. He had to play this out a little bit more defensively because of the nine pool, but... Or the over pool, excuse me, but... Overall, I think that Midas is... He's alright. He's doing okay here. And he may go for speed. We'll see if he wants to research that. He may just go straight into Goliath range as well. That's that's perfectly okay thing to do. And yeah, he will go into that. So there's a couple of different ways you can play this. You can build a bunch of vultures and try to run by. Or you can just get very heavy on the defense and try to build as few turrets as possible by making Goliath. So he's probably going to make you know, three, four turrets and just hammer out Goliaths to defend against these mutas. He don't want to. You really don't want to build too many turrets when you're going for this. You need money for SCVs, supply depots, Goliaths, and eventually factories. Now, I'm not 100% sure whether he wants to go for a 5 factory push or not. Uh, because there is a couple of ways. There's 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 a few different ways to play this. But once you 
scout the Terran's main. Uh, it's pretty clear uh, which way that they're going, which direction they're going, and it's completely up to the Zerg player to react appropriately. Two more hatches go down. Shine is going to build up his uh, production capability by quite a lot. But he really does need to get in and figure out what exactly is coming. Supply Depot's right at the edge of the base. Kind of interesting, actually. You don't really see Supply Depot's place like that, usually. Because the mutas will come in and, and kill these, right? If this is a marine medic force, you do not want to have supply depots like this. But I guess it's not bad if you're playing Goliath because the Goliaths way outrange the mutas. It's not like the mutas can keep darting in and, and hitting this over and over again until it dies if Goliaths are standing there. And it just gives you more of a, you know, more time to react if you see the mutas flying in over top of the uh, supply depots. So interesting decision there we don't even have a single turret in fact he's gone for right into triple factory and there's no ebay which is honestly pretty insane no ebay at all kind of greedy uh this might be straight into five fact but he hasn't thrown down a fourth or fifth factory yet there's the fourth we're gonna see a fifth yes there it is so five factory play it is He's going to wait for plus one armor, and then he might go. And then, of course, he he could also just sit here and wait for uh, plus one attack as well, and then go in. And that that's probably more likely. And it's very important that Shine figures out that this is coming, because there is a possibility that uh, Midas might be just building a starport back here. And if Midas builds a starport... And then he builds a, a science facility and eventually gets out a, uh, you know, plus two upgrade and uh, the all important uh, radiate. Then going mass muta would be terrible. It would be absolutely terrible. He's not going mass muta, but there is that option right now. If he wanted to, if Shine wanted to, if he gets in there and scouts that, he could go only muta. Just only build mutas and try to fight this because he is going to attack there's no variation of this build where you build five factories and then you don't attack and take a third base if you're going to take a third base then what you'll do is you'll go for that uh the starport play you build the starport you build the science facility you get into your upgrades you get into another main or another base grab a third uh, maybe even stretch out to grab a fourth and you just turtle up defensively and if the zerg player is going for like all mutas then that can work very very well but if they're going for something like queens then it might be hard so i don't i haven't seen that shine got in there i don't think that shine really knows what's coming maybe with the number of goliaths coming out he might be aware now he's continuing to build hydras he's on what, what, three, four, five, five hatch Hydra. And he's just massing out Hydras as quickly as possible. He's gonna come in from multiple angles. I don't know how good this is. I'm gonna dive on top of this right before plus one attack is done and kill off quite a lot of these Goliaths. But eventually it seems like the Goliaths are going to win this fight. However, you know, I'm, I wouldn't be too upset about this if I was Shine. You've just reduced the overall Goliath count by quite a lot to the point where maybe he can't even push anymore. And this next round of Goliaths is going to come out, but more Hydras are coming, of course. Big waves of Hydras are being made, and they're just getting sent to the front. The scrappier you make this, the better it is for the Zerg player, and he's making it quite scrappy. You will end up losing an Overlord, and that could supply block him, but more Hydras are coming and Shine has managed to weather the initial storm uh, of this Goliath push. Now, plus one attack is going to be that next timing where he could try to come out across the map. But you know what? He's just diving in. Shine's going to get a few more kills. He's backing away, getting more Hydras. He's not really developing either. Shine is very much focused on making only Hydras. He has very few drones, 32 only. 
and he is completely committed to holding this off which is what you have to do against someone who is completely committed to attacking you with this 1-1 uh, one -one timing you have to put everything you've got into defending this so he's gonna run in with a counter attack diving on this ramp of course the SCVs will be pulled and they should be able to do a good job blocking while uh, reinforcements make their way forward but this is buying some time for shine he's killing off a bunch of goliaths that were coming out to reinforce and he's forcing back all these goliaths and this was a, a very important timing for Midas to hit he wanted to go across the map and just deal that damage right now but he's been forced to send all of his goliaths back home he's waiting for a tank now and this will be the next part of this push since he's just focusing on hydras we actually need to get a few tanks out if uh, Midas wants to make this happen he's got 59 workers no more no reason really to be building more workers at this point he does have some money left over which means he probably wasn't spending uh, perfectly during this push but he could build even a couple more factories and just try to continue uh, building up just get even more stuff out on the field although at this point it's probably going to be hard to spend all the money when you're building tanks and you've only got two gases so maybe he wants to build another cc and in fact he will build another cc flyer carapace is coming now and we should see a round of drones 11 drones just started as shine realizes what's happening he realizes that the endless pushing and just torrent of Terran units that's coming across the map has slowed. And that means that it's likely going to be a third base uh, pretty soon uh, that will be coming up for Midas. He wants to slip around the outside with some speed vultures. He has mines coming up as well, which is nice, but won't be able to break out through this area. Also, there's a pretty good spread of overlords around the side which will prevent anything like a drop, although he should know that there's no drop coming. Two more factories are about to finish up. And he's gonna float this CC out pretty soon. Moving the tanks forward just a little bit, sniping a couple of hydras will allow the vultures to sneak out on the map, which is a very nice move. If he manages to get into the third base or the natural with these vultures, it would be devastating damage. Absolutely devastating damage for Shine. And he might just get in here. Oh my gosh. This is huge. He's going to kill so many drones. Two, three, four. I don't know why he'd be laying mines. That mine lay made no sense to me at all. Just kill as many drones as possible. Uh, he is going to go ahead and just hit that. I, yeah, see these mines made no sense. What are we even doing? I guess it's going to kill a couple of eggs. But really, what does that matter? Oh man. Wait, when did this come out? Oh, okay, he floated... No, he actually floated a second CC over here? I totally missed that. I was not expecting a CC over at this uh, 6 o'clock. Did he build that on location with a hidden SCV? Oh, that's crazy. I completely missed that, guys. I apologize. If, there, if something happened uh, that I missed, I, I'll try to... Uh, picture and picture it, but... I'm sure some of you guys were screaming at your screen during that moment. 1,600 minerals in the bank now, so he can afford so much mech. Dude, I think Shine might lose this game. Against Midas, no less. Flying in with 11 mutas is pretty sick. He could go after the armory, although it's not even upgrading because he doesn't have a, even a starport at this point. Going after some SCVs, I suppose. Could rotate down over here and just kill those two turrets. And a lot of SCVs would probably end up going down as well. Tanks are all spread out on high ground, which is beautiful. Exactly what you want as the Terran at this point in the game. I'm going to go ahead and kill this barracks, which actually does stop more uh, factories from being made, which is good. Diving on top of a couple of tanks, but... This run by won't prove to be able to do much, I don't think. It'll prove very fruitful. Let's see if he, he did. He know about this? I don't think the shine knows about. He didn't even scout this. He has no idea that there's a base down in the bottom center. 
And I honest, I wouldn't expect it either. If I'm being completely frank. He's got an overlord over here. Checking to see if, you know, maybe he's going to try and stretch out. Take a base in bottom left. You never want to allow a Terran player to get uh, as mech tanks on this high ground. That would be just terrible for Shine. So, he's at least got this over... Uh, in bottom left but he has no idea that he's behind in bases he is playing three base to four he however has a pretty good amount of upgrades over his opponent and there's still nothing uh going for oh he there it is he spots it okay this is a big moment shine just sees this base at six o'clock he knows what a pickle he's in now he starts burrow which is interesting. A lot of Hydras are coming out of his main base. I don't know how long these have been stuck up here, but I think it's probably been a while. Time to start targeting down this uh, egg on the ramp, I think. Get your Hydras out into position. And so, Hydras are going to be brought to the high ground. Tanks are moving forward. That is a lot of Hydras. And at the same time, Hydra's going to break down into the 6 o'clock. We'll pay attention to the battle, though, because this is where... Uh, this is a key moment uh, where this is probably going to be decided. Oh, so many Hydra's just explode uh, to those tank shots. These Hydra's going to make their way down and potentially end this base. He could be killing a lot more, but he's focused at, uh, on the other side of the map, I think, and not letting... Midas take this high ground. Uh, if Midas loses this game, it's going to be uh, down to just multitasking, task switching, and the fact that he does not have very good upgrades. Plus one is done. A plus two is about to be finished for these mutas. And then the Goliaths are going to be doing a lot less damage. Still on plus one. He's losing a lot of SCVs, dropping down to 42. And the mutas are still working over on this fourth base gas denying the gas is pretty big needs to get that gas rolling again over at center right because these ones are about to mine out i think very close still a lot of money in the bank for midas he's not really spending it very well unfortunately and it feels like shine is pulling him apart just with pure multitasking getting in and dealing damage everywhere and forcing attention in areas that Midas cannot afford to give it. If he went for Guardians, I think that would be pretty funny. Uh, there's no sign of a Starport uh, even still. Okay, there it is. Finally, the Starport's done. Hydras are going to come in. He's going to kill this uh, tank. He'll use the uh, uh, Mutas to cover for a moment while the... I just go to work. Okay, maybe the Hydras won't go after that. Uh, at least for the time being. These three tanks are doing a great job. But now the Hydras are right up next to them. They can't really fire. And so these tanks will be killed off uh, primarily pretty, pretty much for free. Which is very nice. Another base over in the top left-hand corner. Shine finally going to get onto even bases. He's been behind at bases for so long. And he's just been hanging on with finesse alone. It's been rather impressive but soon we're going to have a science facility and as soon as that science facility is done 2-2 will be on the way that 2-2 is extremely late being that it's already 20 minutes into this game but better late than never i suppose and once it does come online the hydras are going to absolutely melt It'll make such a big difference. It's going to be shocking. The shock cannons will be raining down hell. When I said shocking, I uh, suddenly realized, isn't that isn't the name of the, 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 the gun? The sh something shock? <laughs> I had to check it there, though. Here comes a, a, a big group of mutas covering the... Uh, attack of hydras that's right behind this that is so many goliaths but the hydras are getting on top of everything and the tank number is getting lower can he actually break through the combination of hydra and muta is pretty strong against this and he's holding the high ground 
Most of these Goliaths are on the low ground, but it appears like he's going to hold. Midas wins the day, the battle, but not the war technically. Because even if he pushes across the map with all these Goliaths, the reinforcement train from Shine should be able to hold this back. Oh, the drones wanted to transfer over to top left, but they're going to be denied for now. Not a great time for them to be moving. I just making their way around the side once again. Could attack 6 o'clock, which is lightly defended. Extremely lightly defended. Only one Goliath in that position has not started 2-2. Two -two. Despite grabbing this science facility, that is rough. 2-2 two -two now starting up, but he's under attack once again at the 6 o'clock. And in fact, starting... Oh, he's, he's, he's okay on minerals, actually. I thought he would be starting to run out on these two bases. But he's looking quite steady uh, in terms of income. 56 workers, certainly enough to keep pumping off of all of these factories. Has a very good supply. 40 supply advantage. It's not an insane advantage, but when the army has to be split like this, we have a lot of army over here and a lot of army uh, over by the natural. There's an opportunity for Shine to bring his entire army to bear on one of these two locations and completely surround and kill half of the army at a time. Which could be devastating. I, oh, he's going to come down and hit 6 o'clock with the majority of his army. And that might just do the trick. He's going to kill all these Goliaths. And he may end up killing the command center as well if he targets it down. Uh, some of his reinforcements are coming out from the hatcheries just getting gunned down immediately. But this is the real story uh, of this game. Midas leaving his army too far out of position not pulling it back is probably going to end him it really does feel like a finesse victory from shine of this game and it gives me some some encouragement honestly that it is possible to beat a mech player even when they have an economic advantage it is a possibility you just need to control your units correctly you need to make the proper decisions the right counter attacks at the right time and you can potentially bring yourself back now it's not over yet still a 30 supply advantage for midas but he's been badly beaten losing this command center was a heavy blow uh, it's going to be lightened by the fact that shine is about to mine out of his natural and his third which will leave him on just two bases which Midas will be back up to two bases pretty soon. But just the way that Midas and Shine have been uh, clashing throughout this game, it makes me feel like Shine is still going to be able to take better trades. Now, that might not be the case as this 2-2 two -two kicks in. That is going to make a massive difference to these majority Hydra armies. And as long as Midas holds this position and this position over here, of course, this could still be a uh, kind of a gaping hole, but you get what I'm saying. As long as he prevents Hydras from breaking through this direction or through this direction, he could hold half the map. That is a distinct possibility. Uh, Burrow comes in a little bit clutch. However, with the uh, scan, able to kill a few more drones. Shine going to get back to mining, though, as the mutas come out to clear that. And this will get a little scary, guys. Shine does not seem to have the numbers just yet to break this. He could definitely break this. And I hope that he does soon. Because this is kind of wide open. The position over on the left-hand side is good and strong for Midas. But this position is extremely weak. And should be broken open by Sharp or by Shine excuse me, very, very soon. See if he's going to make that move. Or will he just wait for Midas to aggress? Currently building his Queen's Nest at 25 minutes into this game. Kind of an insane statistic there. Maybe will eventually go into Queen's. Because you actually need it. You need Queen's if you want to take on uh, the late game high upgrade tank Goliath army. 
Uh, it's not going to cut it, just pure Mutalisk and Hydra, especially if they end up getting a Vessel into that army. Plus three attack starts. And he will be breaking in to this natural. At the same time, Shine breaking out of his main base natural. Going to go ahead and uh, take a position on the map. He could try to attack into here, but reinforcements are already being sent. Might not be such a good idea. Maybe he can surround and finish off this army that's breaking into top left. Killing that off would uh, be a huge blow, but instead he's going to head for 6 o'clock. Finding the one hole in the defenses of Midas. He's also going to attack into center right at the same time. But this leaves him uh, in a precarious situation where he doesn't have Sunkins on the high ground. He's going to start to build them now. But this is scary. If he loses this base uh, in the top left, and he will lose this base. If this unseizes and goes up the high ground now, he 100% is going to lose this base. And yeah, here we go. These tanks will get up on high ground. Now you can never break this. This is now Midas's base, 100%. As long as he stays up there, you will never break that position. Brewing a lot of his drones, trying to hide some of them. I don't know if Midas will let him get away with that. That's a lot of drones down there, by the way. So the drone number is not going to tell the true story for some time. Uh, but Shine will go on the counterattack, diving into the natural. Great D matrix there. No irradiate, I suppose. And so that D matrix saving the tank for quite some time is going to make it hard for Shine to push through. He is pushing up into the natural. He is going to break these tanks. Oh my gosh. Could he actually stop all of the mining for Midas? Midas is going to pull his entire army back. They're still mining over this spot. And he can unburrow and retake that base at the same time. Midas is going to lose position uh, over here. His last mining base is just about out of minerals. This last patch will finish up right as the Hydras get into this position. So that is kind of hilarious. Only 23 workers remain. Might as well pull those back. You're not getting any money off of that anyway. Just keep those SCVs alive as they might be useful later. S command center is going to go down. He's still got two command centers. Can lift off and go find another place to mine. As he tracks down this army though. Shine is looking to be in a dominant spot. 83 supply to the 80 of our Mecking Terran. But he has way less SCVs. So it doesn't quite tell the story. The supply... Oh my gosh, he's going to kill everything. All these Hydras are going to go down. Nice target on a last couple of tanks. As the army retreats, he opens up a pathway of escape. These SCVs are going to be set to mine. I don't know where. Maybe down at bottom center, but this is, this is getting very tough. Midas will have to mine somewhere, and then he's going to have to defend his natural at the same time. This is a smart play. Go for the main or go for the middle of the map. However, how much gas does he have and how much is minerals really going to help if he has no gas? This is depleted. The SCVs were pulled out of the main. There's only one SCV mining gas. So what? We have 700 minerals. We need gas. Midas going to send an SCV down to bottom center, but already Shine is is prepared to go ahead and attack that base he has to find out about this right now these vultures need to attack into one of these bases or he's just going to lose Midas forces forced to cancel he's gonna track down these hydras on the left hand side and vultures will be sent up but he just has no idea he has no idea about this base and because of that he may just end up losing Oh, he's got to send those units over to that base. He has to send them down there. Lot of mines. Going to be soaking up some lings. Very good move, though. He doesn't even have ling speed, by the way. <laughs> We're 30 minutes in with no ling speed. And without that ling speed, he's not going to be able uh, to, to do much with those lings aside from just clear mines, which is really what he needs to do anyway. Throwing out some scans. Did he finally find that base? No. He still hasn't found this base. It's crazy to me. 
that that's still gone unscouted. Coming down to take a command center at bottom center. But could easily deny that with just a few mutas. And indeed, he has 11 mutas ready to deny that base. These four tanks are so exposed. If he picks those off, that could be just straight up lights out. Hydra's moving around the right-hand side. Muta's moving along around the left-hand side. This game is going to end the way that it was played with Midas falling behind to the finesse of Shine. Shine is going to find some way to win this game. It's crazy, I know, but he's actually doing it. He's preventing the mining of Midas for so long. Midas has five SCVs. He's got no mining whatsoever. He could, of course, lift the command center and go mine in the main, uh, in the, the middle of the map, but what's that really going to do for him? This base has been mining for so long, it finally has sunken colonies. And there's really nothing that Midas can do about that. He could, of course, bring his tanks down, and he may end up doing that, but uh, he has to win with this army. He's never going to get his economy back up and uh, running again. He has to recognize that i think it's time to float all the buildings no he leaves the game i think he just scanned i think he just scanned this base and realized right at the end there scanned the base and left oh that's so sad that's so savage shine hiding that one base and midas failing to scout it he had so many vultures running around that could have just shut that down there is a world where Midas shuts down this base and then he just floats all of his buildings. <laughs> you can just float all your buildings and chase your army uh, because the army is, it packs a real punch. It's going to be so hard to deal with. I can't see the upgrades now, but it was 3 2. And so it would be so hard for Shine to attack. And as soon as he shuts down this mining, Sh Shine has to win with the army that he has. And his army was not better than what. Midas had Midas's army was certainly better and so shine would have been forced to GG crazy crazy game to finish this one off guys I really enjoy watching uh, some Zerg outsmarting out maneuvering a mecking Terran player it is so hard to do uh, when there's mines out everywhere and tanks are all sieged up on high grounds and Positions are just completely unbreakable, but Shine manages to wiggle around those difficult positions. He was sitting on inferior base count for an insanely long time and still managed to bring it back. Absolutely crazy. So impressed with this guy. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this feature of Shine and all of his games on the ladder. And I'll see you in the next one.